Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Nader. In this video, we're going to actually start the capstone project for the entire JavaScript in-depth series. I'm super excited to get to this. This actually is going to wrap up our entire JavaScript series that we've been learning together uh, this entire time, quite a few videos. Um, so if you made it this far, awesome job. Um, if this uh, project specifically is meant to kind of encapsulate and bring together all of the concepts that we've been studying together uh, for so long throughout all of these videos in this series. So it's really going to touch upon all parts of um, pretty much all the different sections that we've gone through. And I'll mention all those different topics as prerequisites to actually get through this project. So um, before I get into the video, I just want to mention a couple of things. Uh, this really is quite a challenging project. Okay. I've intentionally uh, made this uh, as challenging as I think it can be in order to be both useful and fun and interesting, uh, but enough of a challenge for you to actually learn something meaningful and be proud to show this off, uh, not only to your you know friends and family, uh, do something with yourself and even play yourself, hint, hint in this case, because uh, it's a game, uh, and also even show it to potentially like in interviews and things like that, right? So this is definitely at the level where I think if you were to show it off, it definitely would be quite impressive just because of all the moving parts and different logic involved. Um, so without further ado, let's just get right into the capstone project together. And in this video, I'm actually going to define the requirements, go through everything that's going to be needed. And in the next video, we'll go through the implementation together. All right, so here we are, the capstone project. This is going to be an adventure RPG. All right, so a role-playing role game, uh, if you've ever played one of those where you kind of have a character or a player and you're going to be like exploring this world and there's enemies and uh, loot and uh, items and uh, kind of some goal that we're going to try to get to. Um, so before I kind of show you what this is going to look like, um, I just want to mention the prerequisites, okay? Um, so as I kind of mentioned earlier, this is really a challenging project, hence the fact that this is the capstone for the entire series that we've gone through so far. Um, if you haven't gone through all these concepts that I'm going to mention right now, you will definitely find this even more challenging than it needs to be because uh, these concepts, are, I would say, are the minimum needed to actually require uh, to actually get get like a good handle on even thinking about how to begin this project. Okay, so if this seems like too high of a prerequisite requirement for you, I encourage you to look at the other um, projects on the channel uh, and then kind of work your way up to something like this. Because uh, as I mentioned, this is something that you really want, are going to be proud of and it's going to really kind of tease your brain and it's going to take a long time to build. Okay, I'm going to keep mentioning that throughout this video because I want to hammer that home. This is not something that you're going to be able to just sit in an afternoon and build. And if you are able to do that, um, you did a better job, job than me, right? So this took me uh, quite a while to build um, a minimum of several hours uh, on design and, and coding and things like that and testing things. Uh, I would say in total, probably like half a day to a day. And that's just for me. Right. Uh, so imagine uh, how long that would take if this is your first attempt at something like this and you haven't worked on a project this big before or any other similar type of project. So um, enough yapping for me. Let's look at the prerequisites. So to start uh, kind of on the left hand side here, I have the beginner prerequisites. OK, so we've, we've kind of had projects like this in the series so far. So just to mention these really quick. Now, um, you should be familiar with things like variables and functions, conditionals, arrays, loops and objects. OK, like all the fundamental stuff in JavaScript and pretty much every programming language. On top of that, um, it would be useful to know how to use promises, NPM, uh, which is a node package, package manager, async await, and then ES module so you can import and export uh, different scripts from different files to actually organize your code nicely. Um, I would say that especially with the package that I'd like you to use in this uh, to actually get input from the, the player, uh, you probably are going to need to know all of these things um, at the very least. Okay. And as usual, we're, we're probably going to be using VS Code and Node.js at minimum for this. If you're using another editor other than VS Code, totally fine. Uh, but this is meant to be built in Node. Uh, just to be very explicit, there is no like front end to this in HTML or CSS at all. This is purely going to be built in our terminal like we've been building absolutely everything else in this entire series so far. So we can really focus on the key logic, but also add some visuals and controls to make it kind of fun. 
Okay, so with that said, um, I'd like to mention kind of the intermediate. I don't really like these terms, intermediate and advanced and beginner, uh, but I had to put something, so I kind of put this in here. Um, and I, I probably would consider this kind of at the, at the intermediate to junior uh, level for sure. Uh, you you want to be comfortable with the object-oriented programming concepts. Okay, and we went through this recently to wrap up this series. Uh, and when I'm talking about object-oriented programming concepts, I'm talking about things like classes, the this and the new keyword. Um, inheritance, uh, class properties, class methods, and a little bit of polymorphism as well. If any of these sound like I'm speaking an alien language to you, I highly encourage you to check out the videos I have on this channel about these topics to clear that up. Because quite honestly, if you try to build this project without these concepts, it's going to be possible, but very, very challenging, more challenging than probably it's worth, um, and you're just going to get frustrated. I leaned very, very heavily on object-oriented programming concepts to build out this game because it really lends well to the idea of a game in general. And most game engines like Unity, for example, or Unreal are also based on the same concept. So the uh, kind of crossover is very strong. And as with pretty much everything else that we're building up in this course so far, um, I would like you to make sure that you're very comfortable with debugging, and when I mention debugging, I mean you have something in your code that's not working, and or maybe it's working kind of sometimes, but not all the time, right? You, you wanna be really, really comfortable going in there and trying to figure out what's wrong, right? Uh, put some console logs in there, try different inputs, try to see what some of the edge cases might be. Why is it breaking in this way? Why is it breaking in that way? You wanna be comfortable with that process. And the only way really to do this is by doing a lot of exercises and doing the previous projects as well at minimum, okay? You just need to kind of get out there and do it in order to get experience with debugging and actually tracing the code and figure out what's wrong. So this kind of goes hand in hand with the idea of unstucking yourself, if that's a word, um, where if you get stuck, you're gonna wanna have experience at least into looking at Google, for example, right? Googling your issue, checking on things like Stack Overflow or MDN, um, trying to figure out what the error message is, actually knowing what to Google for in the first place, right? Checking to see if the message that you're getting is similar to someone else that they're posting on some kind of forum like Stack Overflow. All these are important skills that you've hopefully developed over the series so far that I've been pushing uh, pretty hard uh, throughout the, the series in different videos. Um, so I hope that you're equipped and you feel like you have uh, enough problem solving skills, debugging skills to actually uh, kind of attempt different portions of this. Now, as I'm saying this, I know I'm probably making it sound very, very kind of scary and intimidating, but I just want to make sure that you are aware that this project is meant to be hard. Okay, I'm gonna say it one more time. This is meant to be a challenge. Okay, because otherwise, uh, if it was a walk in the park, you wouldn't learn anything and it would give a false sense of confidence and hope. Uh, and if it was too, too challenging, uh, then there's no point because you would just kind of give up and get frustrated and you wouldn't learn anything. So I'm trying to kind of meet that middle ground to not only make it so that we're covering everything that we've done in the course so far, but to have something that you can show off to others that you're really proud of and show how complicated the logic is that you actually built. And it's not some trivial example. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at what this is actually going to look like when we build it. So I have some screenshots here and I'll do a little demo as well in VS Code in a second. Um, so don't worry if these are a little bit too small. I just want you to kind of get a general visual sense of what is happening. So these are three different screenshots I took from my terminal. Okay, um, and again, I'll, I'll show this to you in my actual terminal uh, shortly. So up here, I have an example where I have a grid, right? You can see in all these, there is a kind of a grid. Right? And this is a grid of what looks like trees. Uh, but you'll notice that I have kind of a character over here. It's a little monkey, right? You can choose whatever character you want. And I have a goal up here in the top right, which is a star. All right. So the goal of this game, and we're going to go through requirements in a second, it really is just to get up to the star, right? It's as simple as that. And we can do that by moving in four directions, right? And it's effectively a map or a grid. And our little monkey, in this case, or our player, has some statistics like uh, health points and attack points and defense points and we can encounter different things along the way like a, an item or an enemy right and we have to defeat these things or pick up these things along the way to kind of help us succeed or not succeed in our journey all right so uh, for example over here uh, you can see that i moved to the right uh, and i found a sword and then this sword had some statistics and now i have picked up this sword and i can use it to fight enemies 
Um, over here, you can see that I'm just kind of navigating this grid. And eventually, I made my way to the top and I kind of uh, won the game. Right. And you can see that along the way, I picked up a whole bunch of different things and defeated some uh, enemies and I got some statistics. And over here, you can see that I encountered a spider. Uh, if you're scared of spiders, I'm sorry. <laughs> so am I. Um, uh, and this spider was a little bit weaker than I was, so I was able to actually defeat it. Uh, but it did do some uh, damage to me. Uh, and uh, kind of I had to be careful if I encountered too many of these, then it might be an issue in my kind of journey to the top. All right. So uh, just, just some examples, so visually, because a picture really is worth a thousand words, and I'm going to demo this, uh, so you can see kind of conceptually what I'm talking about when I'm going through these requirements. Okay, so here are the requirements for the project. I hope I have all of them down. Uh, if I forgot any, uh, please uh, hammer me in the comments, uh, but I think I got most of them here. So we're going to create a command line application. Again, this is in the terminal. Okay, we are not going to be doing anything in HTML, anything in CSS. That is going to be coming up in a future series. Uh, so we really want to be comfortable with the core of JavaScript. Okay, that's the point of this entire course. Um, and uh, kind of trying to fiddle with HTML and CSS detracts from our understanding of JavaScript because we really want to focus on the logic and the design of JavaScript programs. Okay. Um, the more that you do this, uh, the more it's easier to build stuff in HTML and CSS later anyways. So this is going to be a pure command line application or a terminal based application. And we're going to be able to play a game from the command line. All right. Now there's going to be a grid and you can think of this grid as that grid that I showed you, right? Um, it's basically our map that we're going to be traveling through and it's going to be uh, dotted with a whole bunch of background objects like our trees, for example. Okay. Now the player's goal is to reach the top right while starting at the bottom left. Okay, so you can see that we are starting down here and we want to reach the star up over here. All right. Now the player basically has four options, right? We can move up, we can move down, we can move left and we can move right, but we can't move off the map, right? So if we start in the bottom left, then we can't move left and we can't move down uh, until we've moved somewhere else where that's possible. So if you're at the edges, for example, you can't move off the edges, all right? Hopefully that's pretty self-explanatory. Each move that we make, right? So for example, when I moved to the right over here, right? Uh, or when I moved up over here, right? Every single move that we make, there is a chance for either an enemy or an item or nothing happening at that spot. Okay. So we're going to basically generate uh, something that's going to calculate whether some event happens and most of the time, okay, I'm going to leave this up to you because this is actually part of the fun of the game. So I'm just going to use very vague language. Most of the time, nothing is going to happen, right? We're going to kind of adventure into a square and it's going to just say, oh, cool. There's nothing over here, right? So for example, if you look over here, uh, as I'm kind of adventuring through this grid, you can see like, I'm getting kind of a generic message. These surroundings look familiar or something like that, right? And I'm keeping track of where I'm going using these footprints, which are all emojis. All right. So you can see I'm moving up uh, and then right and then right and then up, up, up and then right, up, up, left, etc. Right. Most of these encounters are empty kind of spaces and we're just looking around and we kind of made it one step closer to our goal. A small percentage chance, uh, and I'm going to leave this up to you according to your design uh, ideas, right? We might encounter an enemy. Okay. Uh, and another small percentage of the time we might encounter an item. Now, if we encounter an item, all right. So for example, over here, you see that I've encountered a sword, <laughs> encountered a sword. I guess that sounds kind of weird. I found a sword, right? Uh, the sword is going to have some statistics. In this case, it has some attack points and some defense points. And my player also has some attack and defense points as well as some hit points. Okay, the sword does too in this case. And when we encounter the item, what's going to happen is our player, right? In this case, my monkey is going to just pick up that item automatically, right? So I'm going to effectively have that item stats added to my character so now I basically am permanently buffed with that added statistic. So those stats get added to my stats permanently. So once I've encountered this uh, sword, you can see that I, I, I kind of gained in this case 
three attack and one defense. So my attack was previously 10. It's not showing on this, but it was previously 10 and five. So it's gone up to 13 and six. And I'll show you this in a demo in a second. Okay, so nothing fancy is happening. We're not being asked to pick it up or leave it behind or anything like that. Um, another important point to start, and, and I went back and forth on this a whole bunch of times and it was conflicted and went back and back and forth. Um, to start, only have one item. Okay, I'm gonna say that one more time. When we're starting to build this game, in fact, to complete this game, I want you to only have one type of item and one type of enemy. I know that sounds kind of dull and kind of boring, but even just that is complicated enough to really give you a sense of accomplishment and complicated logic enough to actually get something working. Uh, and I'll show you some stretch goals where we can add to our game and make it more complicated later. But to start and really finish off this project as a base, only have one type of item and one type of enemy. Now, the reason for this is that there is a lot of extra complicated things we need to keep track of uh, when we're trying to generate different types of enemies and different types of items um, that I'll leave it to you to think up as you're trying to design this. And if you've played your own games, you might be able to think of some of these examples as well. But there's enough extra stuff in there, basically, that I think adding it to this game is going to overcomplicate it at the start and would actually um, basically make it like almost double the scope. Right. And it's already very uh, complex and it's a lot of moving parts. And I want you to be able to get a sense of accomplishment with something very, very solid uh, to start. And you can add on to it if you desire later. So one type of item, if you run into it, you just pick it up. In this case, my entire game has only a sword. Um, and if I run to a square, there's a chance I might find that sword again. And then I can pick it up again and get more statistics. OK. Um, so you can imagine expanding on that, and we'll mention that at the end of the video. Um, if we run into an enemy, now again, there's only one type of enemy. In this case, I only have one type of enemy called a spider, and it has the same statistics all the time, um, but we could expand on that as well. But in the case of running into an enemy, what's going to happen is we're going to fight right, this enemy. And the way that that fight works is that we're, it's going to basically be turns. So the player is going to hit the, the enemy, and then the enemy is going to hit the player, and we're going to calculate the statistics uh, difference that happens. So the damage that we do, um, to, for, for example, if I hit the spider, uh, the damage that I do to the spider is my attack points, right? So say I have 10 attack points, for example, right? Uh, minus the spider's defense points, right? So the spider is going to have some defense. So maybe the spider has five defense. So if the spider has five defense and I have 10 attack, then I'm going to do five damage, right? Because it's 10 minus five. Okay. And the same goes for the other way around, right? If the spider uh, has 10 attack and I have five defense, then it would do five damage to me. So we go player turn, uh, enemy turn, and then we calculate the statistics. Now there's many ways to do this and you can kind of do uh, like kind of calculate in between. Um, for example, the player always goes first, the enemy always goes first, or we could roll it like a, a number or something. But just to keep it simple, have the player and the enemy hit each other one time, then we calculate the difference and then we keep running that in a loop. Now, if the uh, enemy runs out of hit points, right? If the enemy's hit points hits zero or less, then we've defeated it and we, we can continue on our kind of journey. Right. Uh, and we might have lost some hit points along the way. Right. But that's fine because we didn't actually get defeated. We just got a little bit bruised up. Right. Um, if the enemy actually defeats all of our hit points, if our hit points go to zero or less, then we lose the game. Okay, We can't continue and the game immediately stops and we get a you lose message. All right. So that is kind of the logic for the, the turns and kind of how it works. It's not really turns in this case. It just loops through these very quickly uh, and does a final calculation. It does, in my case, it doesn't even print them out. We just see the final result of that uh, kind of turns playing out. Um, and I have a very simple example where I have a spider that I find and that's the only type of enemy that I have in my game. Okay, so we'll see how that works uh, as well in the demo, but hopefully that makes sense. Now, to win the game, the player needs to reach the goal, which in our case is in the top right, all right? And we lose the game if we run out of all of our hit points before we reach the goal. So if we hit an enemy and it is strong and defeats all of our hit points and we don't have enough, for example. 
all right? So that's kind of the mechanics of the game. And just to kind of recap this, there's going to be one player, okay, in this case, my monkey that I'm moving up and down. Um, we're going to have one type of enemy to start. In this case, a spider is what I have. And we're going to have a single item to start. In this case, I have a sword, as I showed you. Each of these is going to have health points or HP, attack points, defense points, and then a sprite. A sprite is basically just that little image that you see on the screen. And this is going to be an emoji. Okay, so you can pick any emoji you like from the list of emojis, and I'll show you uh, a shortcut to do that. Um, on Max, it should be uh, op option uh, or control, control command space, I believe, or, or something like that. Uh, and on, on a PC and Linux, I think it's uh, control um, alt period. I'll, I'll check. I'll double check. It's something like that. Um, but there is a way to bring up an emoji keyboard on Macs, PCs, and Linux. Um, and we want to use that to actually show uh, what is being uh, kind of seen on the screen, whether that's a tree or whether that's our footprints or whether it's our character or like um, a sword, for example, or a spider. Okay. So if I come back here to my example, you can see that immediately the grid kind of has already all these different types of emojis. So I kind of initialized it with a nice kind of healthy set of trees over here, right? Different types of trees and cacti and things like that. And as I move my monkey, which is my uh, player emoji, uh, I, I, I leave behind a set of footprints so I can see where I've been before. All right. Now, I, sh I should probably mention one more extra thing here that I've kind of forgotten the requirements now. Um, if you backtrack, right? So if I, if I visit back into my footprints, I can't hit an enemy or an item again. Okay. Um, so hopefully that makes sense, right? Like um, if you kind of already defeated an enemy or found an item at that spot, now it's clear and you can kind of freely move backwards without worrying about something happening in that spot. But if I visited a spot that is a tree in this case, then there's a, a chance that something is going to get generated. Okay. So um, you can see that as I hit a spider in this case, or one of the enemies, I have a little spider emoji here. I don't know if you can see that. I'll show you that in the terminal. And if I hit a sword, you can see a little sword emoji here that, that pops up. Um, and we have like other emojis, like when I win the game and, and things like that. Okay, so have fun with it. Um, I, I don't really want to tell you what to put in here. You can kind of design it however you like. You can put some mountains, you can put uh, different types of trees or foliage or flowers or whatever it happens to be that you want. Um, and you can have different types of items and enemies um, and different type of player, right? Uh, so it's up to you to design this. And that's part of the fun of doing this. But visualizing it with emojis is probably the easiest way since we're using a terminal. Um, there are other ways we can actually build like a really fancy UI, uh, but that would require way too much effort and again, beyond the scope. So we're going to stick with a nice emoji grid for this capstone. Okay. Now, one more thing we've used this package before. So with NPM, um, you don't have to do this, but I would recommend it. Uh, I'm going to be doing this in my solution. Uh, I'm going to be using the inquirer package, right? Uh, or library. Uh, and that is the thing that kind of allows me to pick from this like a list right here of like up, down, left and right really easily in the terminal and get a result. So I don't have to code that myself. That's all in this inquirer package. Okay. So um, I'm using that and um, I encourage you to, to make it a little bit simpler so you can get the input of which direction to move from the player much easier. Okay. Perfect. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. What I'd like to do next is just give you a little bit of advice. And this is kind of a copy from the other projects. And I just want to mention it really quick, just in case you haven't seen those before. Now, you're going to get stuck. All right. That is actually the point of these projects. <laughs> if you don't get stuck, uh, I don't believe you. <laughs> uh, I got stuck even uh, building this project several times. Uh, there's a lot of little bugs that I had. And I, I was like, oh, man, why is this happening? Like, I got to figure out what to do here and then eventually fix it. Right. Um, so the point of these projects is to have something large enough in scope that there's so many different parts where you're going to hit hurdles and get stuck. Part of being a good developer is learning how to embrace the feeling of being stuck and then unstucking yourself and really treating it as part of a process that you're going to get better at over time as you learn to do this more. Okay. In fact, I would say that as you're getting stuck, instead of being frustrated, just you probably should tell yourself, 
oh, this is this is pretty good. You know, I know that sounds a little bit crazy, but you really try it. You know, I, I think I think if you if you get stuck and you're kind of like, oh, this is good. Like, I'm happy that I'm stuck. Right? Um, I'm going to get unstuck. That's that's my goal. Right. I'm going to get unstuck and I'm going to take this time just to kind of reflect on kind of how I feel about being stuck. And this is really not great, uh, but I'm going to remember that when I do get unstuck and I absolutely will eventually, right? And whether that takes a couple minutes or a couple hours or even a couple of days in some cases, right? You can then reflect and being like, yeah, I was able to get unstuck. I thought this thing was impossible, but I got over it. And it turns out that the more that you do this, right? The, the kind of more bulletproof and resilient you get over time as a developer, okay? Now, if you get stuck for too long, um, instead of kind of beating yourself up over it or, or hitting your head against the table, right? Um, you should definitely take a break, right? It, it's quite miraculous that if you take a break, go for a walk, or you know, get a, get a tea or something, and come back, uh, or even take a, you know a nap, or, or have, a, or if you sleep and look at it the next morning, um, you you probably will look at it with a fresh set of eyes and be able to actually get yourself unstuck much quicker than trying to slam away at it for hours, okay? Um, and that, that, that's usually a good strategy if you get stuck on something for too, too long, like, like a couple hours or longer kind of thing. Okay. Um, the other thing is that Google really is your friend, right? Like any search engine, frankly, um, you're going to want to use it extensively. Uh, there are going to be times where you're going to have an error. You're going to want to Google it, see what other people have dealt with. You're going to want to look up MDN on the documentation as to how to do certain things with classes and arrays and objects and all that kind of stuff. Um, just Google everything. Right? Don't feel bad about it. Uh, just don't ever, 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 ever copy and paste code off of the internet. Even if it's on websites like Stack Overflow or you know ChatGPT or like whatever it is that people use these days, um, don't copy and paste code off of those uh, websites and tools. Okay. Um, even if you know that it works, and even if you said like, "Oh, I could have coded this myself," never ever copy and paste the code. Always take it and rewrite it yourself. Even if it's literally like you have two screens or you're flipping back and forth on one screen, alt tabbing or whatever, and you're just copying it yourself manually and typing it in, doing that and getting the habit of doing that is so important. And you will th thank yourself and, and hopefully maybe me, um, you know, years down the line uh, where you, you had that as a habit and it's helped you improve as a developer. Okay. Um, the next thing is, especially true for this project, right? You're probably looking at this project and being like, oh my gosh, Natter, what have you done? What have you unleashed on all of us, right? Um, this is gigantic. This project is huge. How might, how would you ever expect any of us to accomplish this, right? And that's kind of the point, right? Um, I, I want to push you down. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I want you to have something like really big to kind of sink your teeth into so that you, you can have practice with that because when you're actually, um, you know, working on a team or working on a really big project, you're going to, you're going to run into that where you're going to have something that's going to be like, Oh my gosh, I have no idea how to do this thing. Right. But you're going to just figure it out. You're going to break it down into smaller pieces and then you're going to break those down into smaller pieces and you're going to solve those one at a time. And miraculously, if you do that enough and you keep solving those smaller pieces, it turns out that you actually solve the bigger problem. Right. It's like recursion, uh, pretty much in, in reverse. Right. Um, so it truly, truly works. And that's really the way to approach pretty much every single problem. You've seen me solve problems throughout this course so far. Um, I would encourage you to kind of break things down in the same way and kind of approach things at like a fundamental level with the things that, you know, instead of trying to worry about trying to fit everything in all at once. And probably most importantly, uh, the advice I could give you is just to have fun. This project, it really is meant to be something fun and long lasting. So that even when you're done it and you've finished all the requirements that I just mentioned, you can actually revisit it and add more to it to make it even more fun and even more complex so that you can really test your skills and show it off and be proud about it. Okay. If you're not having fun with it, um, then it, it really kind of defeats the point of uh, doing this stuff, right? If you're just frustrated, 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 uh, it's not a fun place to be. You want to kind of be able to sit back and kind of relax a little bit. Every time you solve something, be happy about it, reflect on it, relax, um, and kind of play around a little bit. Once you have a little movement going, uh, just play around with the movement, just have some fun with it, right? Um, you, you don't have to kind of rush into it and try to get everything done all at once or try to, you know, figure everything all out. Uh, just kind of one step at a time and enjoy yourself along the way. Okay. 
So what I'm going to show you next are some tips uh, specifically for this project. Now, if you don't want any kind of uh, mini spoilers, uh, you can definitely pause the video and probably revisit this uh, later. Um, so that's your warning right there. I'm not going to give away too much, uh, but just enough that if you really want to take a stab at this fresh with kind of zero guidance and just thrown into the fire kind of thing, uh, you can uh, pause the video and kind of not take a look at the stuff I'm going to mention next, but just some high level tips that I can give you. Okay. So, uh, the way that you want to kind of start this is you really want to make sure that you understand the requirements. Okay. Um, watch the demo that I give, look at the pictures, make sure it makes sense to you, kind of draw it out on paper uh, or you know, play it through in your head and make sure it makes sense uh, as to what it is you're actually building. I know this sounds a bit silly, right? Uh, but it turns out that if you actually are clear in your mind of the product that you're building, it's much easier to kind of make decisions and figure out which direction to go with things as they come up than it is if you kind of make stuff up as you go along. Okay. Um, I would lean very heavily here into classes and object oriented programming because game design uh, and kind of uh, making games and things like that is really all about different objects and how they interact with each other in a world. Okay, so there's a lot of things like state management and object interactions that are happening in here. And that's like literally the point of OOP, object oriented programming, right, is to model objects and have them interact with each other where each of those objects has some state associated with it. Now, I would encourage you to draw out your ideas and classes and their kind of methods and data, all that kind of stuff on paper first, okay? Like without writing any code, like literally pen and paper, pencil and paper, right? Um, or, you know, if you have like a tablet and a, a, like a pen, a pen tablet or something, just, just draw it out. Um, you can draw out what you think kind of the main objects in the game are. And then for each of those objects, you can then start adding the different uh, fields and data and methods that you think make sense. Um, and you can either have more classes, you can have less classes, you can try to find a good balance and trade off. Okay. There is a technique for this uh, that's a very standardized technique. And this is called the UML diagramming kind of technique, or I think it's like unified uh, modeling language or something like that. And if you look that up, you can see some examples of what that looks like. It's basically just a bunch of boxes and lines, um, just as you'd expect for what the different objects actually look like in an OOP system. Then what I would encourage you to do is once you have all that, it, it, you're kind of looking at a blank VS code and you're kind of like, oh my gosh, like where do I start? Right. Um, so I would encourage you but to start by drawing out the grid and placing the player and the goal. Simple as that, right? A static grid, put the player on there, put the star on there or whatever it is that you choose, right? Just to show visually that you have that done. It's a two dimensional array. Okay. Then probably makes sense to see if you can move the player, right? So what does it mean to move to the right or up or down or left? Now you can actually do this without uh, the inquire package. You can actually call the functions that are doing the moving for you uh, manually, for example, to actually test that it works. Okay. And I encourage you to do this and I'll show you how this might work when we actually code it together. Um, but start with a grid and then see if you can move around those grid and see if you can actually uh, like set some of those cells that you're visiting as visited. Okay. Then what probably makes sense is to see how you can randomly spawn um, an item on a cell when you move to it. Now this sounds simple, right? But there's a, a bit of kind of uh, thinking involved here, right? Um, and a lot of this also is game design, right? So if you have too many items, that might be too boring, right? Too easy. Uh, if you have too few items, that might not be very interesting. It might be kind of boring in a different way, right? Um, it also might make it too challenging if you have too few items because then you don't get enough uh, stats to actually uh, attack the enemies. Um, so I'd encourage you to actually uh, like figure out how to generate an item with some stats and then see if you can get a percentage chance so that when you move to a cell, uh, instead of it just always being kind of a discovered cell, there's a chance it might be an item. Then add the ability to maybe pick up the item, right? So add that item's contents into your own stats. 
right? And this is where the concept of object and object interaction starts to come in. Then you can do the same for an enemy, right? See if you can randomly spawn an enemy on a cell when you move to it. And then you have to figure out, well, how am I going to make it so it's either an enemy or an item or maybe nothing, right? Remember, most of the time it's going to be nothing. Sometimes it's going to be an enemy and sometimes it's going to be an item. Then you're going to figure out probably one of the more challenging parts, which is how do you fight the enemy, right? How do you make that loop of calculating the attack minus the defense for each of the sides and making sure that we kind of go until one of the HPs are zero. All right. And then maybe finally you can add the actual controls where you can move up, down, left, and right, because before this, you can, uh, I mean, you can add this at really at any point, but before this, you can really just do it manually by calling the functions inside of uh, like manually, wherever it is that you have in your design. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. I'd like to show you a demo of this really quick, and then I'm going to uh, show you some stretch goals. So again, I, I'd encourage you to pause the video if you're not interested in seeing kind of the class design, because as I show you this demo, um, I'm actually also going to show you what the class looks like um, at a very, very high level. Okay. So um, I guess technically I can, I can show you this uh, without the classes, but it's not going to give away too much. Uh, and, and technically you can design this however you want. Um, so really uh, it, it's up to you if you want to actually um, see how the class is designed and actually follow it or design it in your own way. All right. So um, I'm going to do a demo over here really quick on the right side before I show you this class. Uh, so I'm going to run my program and you can see here that I've generated this grid. Um, and I kind of have, a, I guess, a bug here. I didn't really fix this where I'm, I'm asking for the direction up here. Uh, but you can see I have my player stats. Uh, I have 20 HP, 10 attack, 5 defense, and I'm in the bottom left. Uh, and I created a small grid here, 5 by 10. Uh, and uh, my kind of goal is up here in the top right. So, for example, uh, you know, I can choose where I want to move. You can see I can move up, down, left, or right. If I, if I choose down, I'm going to say I cannot move down, right? Um, and then it's, it's going to, uh, oh my gosh, uh, then I can choose right, uh, for example, and then I move to the right. This is very hard with my uh, little uh, bubble in the, in the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to try my best to, to make this easy to see. Uh, and then, for example, I can, uh, now that I've moved right, you can see that there's nothing here. Right. I'm going to clear my screen just so that this doesn't interfere with my little uh, portrait in the bottom. And then I'm going to say I want to move uh, up now. Right. And then if I move up, you can see I didn't discover anything there. Hopefully, I think I've set my discovery chances uh, to be not too bad. There's nothing there. Uh, I'm just going to keep doing this. You can see this is really a game. I'm going to go to uh, the right now. Uh, coast is clear. Oh, my gosh. Come on. I should probably increase the, the spawn chances here. I'm going to go up. Okay, there we go. So. Um, you can see that I've kind of made my way through this path and I found a sword, right? And uh, my sword's stats in this case were three attack and one defense. And you can see that now they've been added to my player stats. So now I have a little bit more power if I do encounter a spider along the way, All right? So now maybe I'm going to go up. Uh, there's nothing there. Uh, maybe I'll go uh, like left, for example, just so I can eventually hit a spider somewhere. Uh, nothing over there, nothing over there. Um, I'm going to go up again. Coast is clear. Oh my goodness. Uh, I'm going to go left. Coast is clear. I'm going to go left again. This is, uh, you can see I should probably increase my uh, chances. I guess this is, uh, my, my game is uh, probably pretty boring here. <laughs> this is also hard to do. I keep finding these swords. Where is my spider? Come on, spider. Come on. Oh my goodness. Watch, I'm going to win this game. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Found a spider. Um, so uh, you can see that the, the spider uh, was uh, pretty weak in this case because I didn't want to actually die as I was testing this game. So I probably should increase its stats. It has five, uh, five attack, one defense, and six health. Um, and you can see that I have seven defense because I found so many swords before I found the spider um, and uh, 16 attack. So actually, it doesn't actually do any damage to me if you think about this, right? Because I actually have more defense than it has attack, right? So uh, it, 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 if I actually can't pretty much lose the game with the way that I have it set up right now, if I found two swords before I really find any spiders. Um, I mean, technically, I think even at the start, I have it set up so I can't lose uh, because as I was testing this, I had five defense, I think. Um, you kind of get the point, hopefully, right? You're going to have to tweak the statistics, and this is part of game balancing that gets a bit tricky. Um, so I'll leave it up to you to decide kind of what the stats are. That's 
a part of the point, but not really the point because that's part of the fun of designing this game. And as you're testing it, what you can do is pretty much make yourself like invincible so that you don't have to keep restarting the game. Um, and then you can kind of increase the difficulty to see what feels good to you and feels like a real game. All right. Um, I'm glad I was able to hit a spider and eventually if I get to the right, I would win the game. All right, now to, to show you what kind of what this looks like, um, even just looking at this, hopefully you can see that there's um, quite a bit going on, okay? I have a whole bunch of files here. Now I'll, I'll do a quick run through of these files just so it makes sense at a very high level without actually showing you much code, just kind of the design that I went with. Now you don't have to do it this way. In fact, it probably would be more confusing to do it this way. I just wanna show you just kind of at a very high level what might be a possible design so that you can kind of start to think about the different methods and data that you might need. Okay, so here I have my grid, which is really my main class. I probably should call it the game. Um, I have a constructor in here. You can see it takes some, uh, some parameters or some arguments. Um, I have like a start game function, display grid function, an insert function, execute turn function to kind of figure out what happens to the turns, generating objects function, and then movement options for moving the player left, right, up, and down. Okay. And what I've then done is I've created kind of this item object. Okay. And so I'm starting to use um, a lot of OOP concepts like inheritance. And, and this is going to be kind of like a base class. I have a constructor, I have some stats, items, get stats, and describe. So all kind of items are going to have this structure. Um, and uh, sorry, I, I should have mentioned grid object comes first. Uh, so that extends from grid, grid object, uh, which is going to have a describe property and a constructor property as well. So my item is a grid object. And then my enemy is also a grid object. Uh, and it has um, similar kind of uh, methods, but slightly different as well. Okay, you can see that they all kind of share the describe and a couple other methods, but some some things in here are a little bit different. Okay. Then I have my player, uh, which is my monkey in this case. And uh, you can see that my player has some stats, a constructor, I can get the stats, I can add to the stats, which is how uh, things happen if I um, run into like a sword or uh, after the, the, the fights, for example. Uh, and then I can describe the player, which is I think something like this right here, where I see the statistics. And then finally I have my prompt, uh, which is kind of this part right here, where I have my up, down, left, and right, which is, um, the inquire package actually doing a little bit of that for me. It's a pretty small function, just so I don't have to really write that myself. And then the hard part is really kind of putting these all together and actually filling in um, the interactions between these different objects and even just modeling these objects in the first place. Um, I definitely didn't come up with this right away at the start. Um, I was kind of debating like, oh, do I need to create like a generic grid object? Does that make sense? Uh, or should I just kind of make an enemy directly or should I make an item directly? Uh, like in the future when I want to expand this, which would be more useful. Um, so there's a lot of decisions to, to kind of make. This is by no means the best way to do this. This was actually quite a quick and dirty way for me to do this and a relatively simple and slightly naive at times way to do this. And I'll show you this when we get to the solution. Uh, this is just one possible option. This is mainly to get your kind of gears spinning in your mind so you can actually start thinking in terms of objects and start thinking in terms of data and methods for those objects and their interactions with each other. Okay, so um, that's the demo. Uh, and I'd like to kind of quickly switch back here to my slides to kind of mention some stretch goals. So once you have this project completed, um, definitely take a break. <laughs> uh, you definitely deserve one, you know, go buy yourself an ice cream or something uh, and relax a little bit uh, and, and treat yourself, right? Because it's definitely quite a doozy to get through. Um, but then if you want, here are some ideas for some stretch goals. And by stretch goals, I just mean something that you can add to this project to increase the complexity and learn a little bit more and show off a little bit more as well. So here are just some ideas and I encourage you to come up with your own as well. And you don't have to implement these. I didn't implement these, but they are something that we could implement and they would actually potentially change how you design and think about your object structures. So. One of the things you could do is maybe randomly generate from a list of different items instead of just one. So you can see, you saw that I can only find a sword just to keep things simple, but maybe I can find like an HP potion to get more health back or a shield, right? Or maybe something else, right? Um, maybe you can randomly generate from a list of enemies. So I only have a spider, right? Uh, so maybe there's uh, other enemies, right? Maybe there's like a, a wolf or a dragon or something, right? And there are different uh, power levels. Um, 
So maybe the really hard ones uh, spawn way less, and maybe the, the, the easier ones spawn more, for example. Maybe you can add level ups and experience to the player like a regular RPG. So when you defeat an enemy, maybe you kind of get stronger, right? Or you get some experience towards getting stronger. Um, and uh, that helps you defeat kind of stronger enemies as you go, especially if you start doing things like making more complicated enemies like this, okay? Maybe you can even add special abilities and skills to the player, right? With that trigger with a certain chance, or maybe when you reach a certain level, or maybe their item pickups, right? Maybe I pick up like a, like a healing scroll or something, and then there's a chance that it'll heal me uh, every single every single fight or every single turn or something, right? Or maybe I have like a special skill uh, that maybe increases you know my defense or something, right? Uh, maybe we can also add these to the enemies. So uh, certain enemies, especially maybe the stronger ones, maybe they can have special skills, right? Like maybe uh, maybe the wolf, for example, uh, has a more defense or something, or it, maybe it has like a howl ability, and maybe it uh, can. Uh, do more damage or maybe there's a dragon that has dragon fire right um, then you can also imagine that technically what you can do is instead of just reaching the goal at the end you could probably make it so that that's just like a gateway to another level right so when, when I kind of like reached my uh, little star here in the right maybe that's just like the level two right I'm going deeper into the dungeon or deeper into the forest right and maybe that level is slightly different and there's stronger enemies and stronger items and all that kind of stuff. What would be pretty cool as well is like, maybe we can add the ability to actually save our progress, right? Um, so as we kind of progress through this, especially if you start making a really large map, uh, maybe you or, or like multiple levels, maybe you can actually save where you are so you can continue where you left off. This is definitely quite a challenge, but would be super cool to actually implement. Um, now really, as you can see, you know, the possibilities truly are endless. Uh, you can you can probably think of you know dozens of more ideas like this. You've probably all at least played a game similar to this uh, at some point, or or you know have an idea of what this might be like. Um, and there's just so much fun that you can have with this idea. That's really the point of this project. And um, a huge component of this project is just like dreaming up ideas and thinking and designing what this will be like, and and really playing with the playing with the design, playing with the numbers. Uh, if I have more of this or less of this or increase this or decrease that, uh, how does that affect the feel of the game? Okay. So the, the neat thing about all this is that even though this all is just running in our terminal, right? Like if it, like this was all just in my VS code terminal, or if I have another terminal running, it would just all run in that terminal, right? This is not like HTML or like unity or unreal, but this process of creating these classes and testing it and changing numbers around and you know game design and object design and interactions between them is really fundamentally game development right and we are basically doing game development right with this project um we're also learning javascript as we go which is really really awesome right um in fact, if you actually go on and you're interested in game development to actually use tools like, say, Unity or Unreal Engine or others, um, you'll actually be doing something very similar to this. It just probably will not be in JavaScript, right? It might be in like C Sharp or C++ or something like that, but the concepts are the same. You'll still probably be using OOP and all, all these classes and data are interacting with each other. It might look a little bit prettier, right? Uh, it might be 3D, for example, or a better looking 2D version of this, but fundamentally, the logic is actually the same. It's literally the same, right? It, there's actually no difference really between some of the logic that you'll be building for this application and something that you might be building for a real RPG, right? There's gonna be attack and defense and health and interactions between those statistics and different items and different enemies, right? And we're gonna remember where we were or like uh, we can revisit those tiles before. All of those kinds of things are uh, traditional RPG and game design techniques. Okay, so really just have fun with it and let your mind explore and just kind of the sky is the limit. But start with that base idea that I mentioned and outlined out here with the core requirements so that you have a nice base to build off of. So uh, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and the project and you find it interesting. If you did, I'd love it if you could like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to hear in the comments, what do you think of this project? Um, like, what did you think when you're watching this video? Are you are you terrified? Are you excited? Is it a mix of both? Um, have you built something like this before? Have you used those tools like maybe Unity or Unreal? Or are you interested even in game development, right? 
are you not interested in game development? Do you uh, do you kind of feel like intimidated by this? Are you are you kind of like, oh, I wish this was like a, a web project or something, right? Um, I'd love to hear kind of what you all think in the comments, uh, and I'll definitely reach out to all of you as you comment. Um, so in the next video, what we're going to do uh, is I'm going to probably make a slightly longer one instead of breaking it up. And uh, I'm going to actually go through kind of my process and the actual coding of all these with all the classes, as you kind of saw in my different files that I showed you. Um, and we're actually going to code out all those methods and code out all the actual data and the interactions between them. And I'll do a bit of explaining. Um, but really, uh, I want you to try your best at it. Uh, you know, don't watch the solution, of course, until you actually have a chance to get as far as you can. Um, and then maybe when you're done or when you get really stuck, you can look at a potential solution. That would be my solution. But by no means is it the only solution. In fact, it's a pretty mediocre solution. It's just simplified and a bit naive in some places uh, just to really show you that you can improve it in so many different ways. Okay. so. Um, I am super excited to get to that next video. Uh, so when you're ready, I will see you in that one. See you later.